Nice guys finish last. It's a statement that definitely holds true for a Monster Hunter's weapon of Sonora's destruction, the Hunting Horn. I mean, here's a weapon that's the embodiment of unselfish team play, one that lets you buff not just yourself, but other hunters so they could perform better. You know, like a rising tide that lifts all boats. I mean, it's literally designed for nice guys. And yet, talk to the first Wyvarian in Monster Hunter World, and he'll let you know that the Dude Stick is the least used weapon in the game. I mean, has there ever been a Monster Hunter game where the Hunting Horn was not the least popular weapon? <laughs> Meanwhile, you've got the jerk that trips everyone else at the top of the list. <laughs> the Longsword is proof positive that the bad guy gets the girl. I mean, I'm sure anybody that's ever used a lance or a hammer can totally relate. But, as every Hunting Horn user will tell you, however, and by that I mean all three of them, it's also the best support weapon in the game because it allows you to support your team by carrying them. <laughs> I've read that in a YouTube comment somewhere and I thought that was a great comment. And that's because the Hunting Horn can actually dish out good damage, especially if you use your recitals to attack the monster instead of doing a soul act in a corner somewhere. Add the addition of Echo Waves with various properties and using the Hunting Horn is even more fun in Iceborne. I still remember the first time I hit the left trigger mid-combo to spin my hunting horn like a musical top, followed by an impact echo wave that knocked the poor monster out. Who's the nice guy now, huh? On that note, here are the three hunting horn sets I've used the most in the expansion so far. These comprise of a master's touch set, a true critical element set, and a more support-based healing set, which I alternate with depending on my mood. Variety is the spice of life after all, and that includes your musical duting preferences. So let's start with the first set, which is a Master's Touch build centered around the Rasping Ballad. Yeah, with 1,218 attack, this acidic glavinous based dude stick boasts one of the highest attack values for hunting horns in the game, especially when paired with its ability to buff you with attack up XL, as well as non-elemental boost by leaving its hidden element unawakened. It also comes with the Impact Echo Wave, which you can use to build KO on monsters. Not Max Negated can also help hunters brush off certain attacks, and it also has a recital that extends its melody effects, allowing you to refresh all song effects with just one tune. Its second echo ability is also the Echo Wave Dragon, which adds another offensive option to your arsenal. The only problem is that it requires handicraft to get to white and purple sharpness, and you only get a small portion of both, with purple sharpness being specially piddly. To fix that, you'll need to have the Master's Touch set bonus, which prevents sharpness loss every time you land a critical hit allowing you to maintain that sliver of purple sharpness longer. Now, Master's Touch sets based on the Teostra set bonus are pretty popular, though you'll notice differences in the sets out there based on what jewels or decos people have access to. In my case, I only have one critical jewel, even after all this time! So I basically need to use either a Silver Rothalo's chest or Shara Arms to get critical boost to, which then allows me to get the maximum critical boost when I use my one solitary critical jewel. The precious. Now when it comes to picking between those two, it basically depends on what Teostra piece you want to equip. Now usually the Teostra arms are the more popular option due to weakness exploit compared to the Teostra chest which has latent power. The chest does have 3 slots compared to the arms 2 slots, although the arms do boast an extra level 3 slot compared to the chest's 2 extra level 1 slots. Anyway, the key skills to have are Master's Touch, Max Handicraft, Max Critical Eye, max weakness exploit, and max critical boost. And then you can try to get that final 10% affinity with your skill of choice, whether it be agitator, maximum might, latent power, or even a combination of agitator plus attack boost 4. Anyway, just do what works for you, but this is what I ended up doing in my case. Now as someone who pretty much rocked master's touch sets most of the time during World's Endgame, I really like this set. This particular hunting horn might not have as many support skills as other hunting horns, but it's a great offensive set that also works well for solo hunts. If you like to play Hunting Horn more aggressively, this would be a good set to use. Up next, we have the Elemental Hunting Horn build. Now, this one is based on using the Silver Rathalos or Silver Soul 4 piece set bonus, which gives you true critical element. Basically, this increases the elemental damage you inflict every time you land a critical hit, meaning that Critical Eye, Weakness Exploit, and Critical Boost would be great to have once again. Now, since I pretty much decided that I'll be using the Garuga legs per usual, that pretty much means I'm using the Silver Soul pieces from head to waist. Once again, the deco mix largely depends on what decos you have, how you want to fill that 10% gap for 100% affinity, 
and how much extra elemental attack or sharpness you want to get from your weapon. In my case, this is what I put together. Now, admittedly, unlocking Silver Rathalos via the Guiding Lands can be a pain, and joining hunts for it isn't always guaranteed either. You do get a Silver and Gold quest that you can repeat once you hit Master Rank 125, as well as the occasional event quest for either monster, so those are options as well. Otherwise, you can just make a two-piece Volcano set. Anyway, I especially like using this with the Sonorous Ice Fill, or Ace Fill. <laughs> Let's go with Ice Fill since it's an Ice Hunt. And that's my favorite elemental hunting horn in the game. I just love, 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 love the look of the Velcana hunting horn, and the performance isn't bad either. Granted, it doesn't have the highest ice element, but it has nice raw to compensate for that, and it can also reach purple sharpness. It also has the all important Attack Up L recital, which means you can do Attack Up XL buffs, as well as Defense Up L, which means you can also do Defense Up XL buffs. By the way, when using the Sonorous Ice Fill, you can also take out the Health Boost Augments that I have in the set, since it can use Health Boost L. Anyway, I'm leaving them in the set I'm using, that I'm showing, because I use this for other stuff, <laughs> including Hunting Horns that do not have Health Boost L. But if you do use the Sonorous Ice Flow, just take out the Health Boosting Augments and replace them with other stuff. You know, like KO or some other affinity boosting skill. The Ice Fill also has Wind Pressure Negated, which means you should be able to shake off most Wind Gusts, except for, say, Kushala Dewar. It also comes with the Max Stamina Plus Recovery Echo Wave, which makes it a great, comfy, quality of life horn when combined with its other recitals. It's an added offensive option. It also comes with the Impact Echo Wave as well. Then last but not least is the Ruiner Nergigante Support Set. So if you're feeling extra supportive and want to play with lots of survivability, this set just might fit the bill. This one is centered around the Ruinous Desolation Hunting Horn from Ruiner Nergigante, which comes with several health-based skills. These include Health Recovery S, Affinity Up, and the extended Health Recovery Echo Wave for health regeneration. It also comes with Earplugs L, which can be specially useful against Roar Happy Monsters. Then there's its High Elder Seal, plus Dragon Echo Wave for good measure. Keeping up with the health theme, I picked Armor Pieces to match. This includes two Black Veil Valhazak pieces for the Super Recovery set bonus, and I also added Max Recovery up, as well as Max Peak Performance since your health should pretty much always be topped off with this set, especially if you throw in a Health Regen Augment as well, which I don't have in my horn at this moment, but yeah, you get the idea. Now to ensure that this isn't quote-unquote just a support weapon, <laughs> I added Max Critical Eye and Max Critical Boost per usual. After all, the Ruinous Desolation has one of the highest attack values for this weapon class. The only downside is that it does not reach purple sharpness, but it does give you a long bar of white sharpness to compensate for that. It also does not come with attack up. However, the added survivability and healing means you and your teammates should be attacking more. Anyway, there you go. Three different hunting horn sets for folks looking to get into this particular weapon class, or perhaps add some variety to their duty team exploits. There are a few more that I'm tinkering with, but these are the three that I use the most so far. So what is your favorite hunting horn set? As always, please feel free to share any thoughts or questions you may have in the comment section. In fact, I'm actually always looking for different sets to try, so I just might try your recommendations out. Anyway, this is Tabi Sobi, and as always, thank you for watching.